Levittown. This is On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. A weekly recap of the 2021 Philadelphia Flyers from blue line to blue line. Broadcasting live from Chickies and Pete's, tonight's show is brought to you by Payroll Service Solutions, Hand and Stone Spa, The Capitol Grill, Pat Dion Beverages, Independence Blue Cross, Chickies and Pete's, and Joseph Anthony Salon and Day Spa. We now go live to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and former Flyers captain, Keith Primo. And welcome, everybody, to the beautiful Chickies and Pete's in Glassboro, New Jersey, on the campus of Rowan University, as we have this On the Ice, our between-week Christmas and New Year's show, as the Flyers take... A trip out west, Disney on Ice, inhabiting the Wells Fargo Center. I'm Paul Jolovitz. An odd show tonight. Our guest, Todd Fedorik, has some uh, emergency at work. He'll be here a little late, probably about 6.30. And Keith Primo, uh, stuck in traffic, will be here late as well. So it's me and our producer, Chris Ermer, for you for a few minutes. Nice crowd here at Chickies and Pete's. Nice holiday. Getting warmer today. Not so much traffic. Chris, how are you on this uh, odd occurrence? Oh, man. Happy New Year. Happy, Merry, happy holidays. Happy All that ho- stuff. I'm doing great tonight. All stuff good to you. I'm, I'm actually doing great. My father's in the hospital, but he's okay. Oh, no. Oh, that's good. Yep. Got a clean bill of health. 92 years old. Whenever you step into a hospital over 90, you worry. My wife's in, uh, in Washington today with him, but I'm here and happy to be here. Our guest and our co-host will be here. As they say, Chris, in show business, the show must go on. Yes, so, indeed. So that's what we're going to do. Flyers are heading out west. Don't know if you saw it today, Carter Hart put on injury reserve by the Flyers. It's a little different, works differently that way than in other sports. He, it's a three-game road trip, including the Dave Haxtall, Seattle Kraken. They're in San Jose tomorrow night. He's definitely out that game. May play the last two games of the trip if he goes through concussion protocol for his quote-unquote upper body. You figure out what part of it <laughs> by the concussion protocol, but you never want to play a game without Carter Hart if you're the Flyers. Now, but as you said, the show must go on, but is this Flyers team this season snake bit with all these injuries? I mean, the games must go on, but well, do you know I how mean, Carter Cam Hart- Atkinson is done? I mean, is this yeah? Uh, I mean, the, the Carter Hart thing is that you think that's just kind of maneuvering uh, pieces on the the chessboard? You're never going to maneuver that piece. So if you're John Tortorella, he was okay at practice yesterday. Supposedly they had to wave Max Wilman, by the way, to do this. Um, Flyers have had the injuries with Cam Atkinson and Sean Couturier and obviously Ryan Ellis done for the year. It's crazy. And plenty of others. Carter Hart got hurt last Thursday in the strangest way possible. Well, not the strangest way possible, but among on the strange uh, continuum, he was not starting the game. Samuel Erson got the start. First NFL game for Samuel, who you hear about later in the show. He got bombarded a little bit in the second period. Got removed by John Tortorella. Carter Hart comes in gets run into in a goal line scrum and gets hurt in a game he wasn't even going to start. Samuel Erson, meanwhile, had to come back in in his rookie, his debut in the NHL. Actually played pretty well in the third period. Flyers come back before losing 6-5. to But when your luck is bad, Chris, uh, it's bad and the dice always come up the wrong number. I mean, with all that said, Paul, is this a year where you, it's difficult to assess how good a coach John Tortorella is, how, how good a team the Philadelphia Flyers are? I don't really think it's difficult to assess John Tortorella because the more players you lose, the more challenge you face. I think he's a tremendous coach. I mean, you can't, you're not going to be able to assess what his ring looks like, what his finger looks like with a Stanley Cup ring on it. That's for sure, barring a complete miracle. But I think he's done a great job. The one thing the Flyers do, Chris, that I will say, in my opinion, and I think a lot of other people's opinions too, including people who go to the games, is they play hard. They, they have a lot of effort. They, they have tenacity. They're not getting beat 9-1 to or 9-2, to as I think Keith Jones said on a telecast last week. You lose, you lose. I mean, there's no excuse. There's no substitute for winning. But they are playing hard. They're just short of talent. And what they are short of talent, they've, they've loaded up on injuries. I think Tortorella's done a great job. He's just playing with half a deck. I mean, do you think then that, that, that it's difficult to assess how good this team is, at least? Yeah, I think it's impossible. I mean... The key is to get a few pieces going forward. Morgan Frost is starting to play better. 
Travis Konecki leads the team in scoring. Kevin Hayes, who's gotten benched, is, is having a pretty good year. But I think the object of this year for John Tortorella, knowing that, again, barring a miracle, he's not going to do anything much, is to see where your talent is, see where your foundation is, get rid of the other stuff, and have a, a foundation to set for next year and a quote-unquote rebuild. He's been asked the question multiple times. He never knows. Chuck Fletcher doesn't know how to phrase it. He doesn't know how to phrase it. But I, I think we're just laying the foundation for the future. Here. I mean, talking about Morgan Frost, I'm surprised to see him coming around. Do you remember the former flyer who was with us earlier in the season who, who named Morgan Frost as one of the guys he felt like was a disappointment? Which show was it? Let's see. It wasn't Ray Alice or Wade Allison who we had no. a couple weeks ago who plays with the Flyers now. And thank God he's back in the lineup after being hurt. Riddle me this, Chris Sermer. I, my memory is... It was a, 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 a Flyers ambassador who has a capacity to not hold back. Bob Kelly? Well, no, I guess that's probably all the Flyers ambassadors <laughs> now that I think about it. But no, it was Joe Watson. Joe Watson. Okay. Yeah. Bob was just here last week. I don't think he said that. Yeah, but... And, and, I mean, we, it was amidst the discussion about what's going on with the Flyers and how some of these draft picks haven't turned out to be what we, they, you know, I have no problem, what, what they thought they were going to be. I speak my mind here on WIP. I know you very well. You're not on the air that much with talking sports, but you speak your mind. I think it's the only way you can be. And if it's negative, if it's from your heart and, and it's what you believe, say it. And Morgan Frost has been slow to come around. Other Flyer draft picks... Nolan Patrick, Heck's probably out of the league now after being uh, sent to Vegas. If they have not drafted well the last few years, they wouldn't be in this situation to begin with. Well, I do like the fact that the Flyers who join us, they don't hold back, and they say how they feel, but it always does raise a little bit of an eyebrow, especially somebody who is a current Flyers ambassador when they talk about it. You know, sometimes diplomacy is the name of the game when talking about an organization – and, uh, you know, and certain and individuals, especially because you never know. Morgan Frost comes around now and Joe Watson's going to eat his words, potentially. But Well, potentially, but that's, that's what you say whenever you say anything about anything. I mean, Morgan Frost didn't exactly play in hard trophy hockey, the MVP of the league, but he's playing better, more aggressive. Looks like he believes in himself a little bit. A lot of young players with the Flyers, defensemen, and Cam York just came up. The, the, the roster's littered with them. They're one of the youngest teams in the league. And, uh, you know, I think the other reason, though, Paul, not to interrupt you, that that raised an eyebrow with me is that, you know, that's kind of what Flyers fans are wanting to hear from those former Flyer players. Which guys do we need to move on from? Which Can, can you identify where the issues are? And it, those are difficult questions to answer. And, uh, but like I said, the, the Flyers alumni, they, they don't hold back. But. Well, that, but the good thing about the Flyers alumni or anybody that speaks their mind, I mean, the, re, the reality of the situation, I've put my foot in you-know-what a million times. You're not always right. <laughs> You'd like to have a high batting average. You'd like to always be right. But nobody's always right. You give opinions that sometimes can be raw and, 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 and truthful and make people unhappy. And then the guy winds up being a great player, and you've got to say, yeah, I did say that. And just, just look at it that way. I mean, to me, the worst kind of human being that, that's around, especially on an interview show like this, is somebody who says, Bob sucks. And then when Bob starts playing well, they're the biggest cheerleader, said, I knew it the whole way. And <laughs> somehow you lost the tape back at the radio station of, of the initial occurrence. Flyers are honest people. I mean, I think it's just as bad to have, you know, sometimes the hot take is like, uh, guy's no good. And then he turns out to be a good player. And the person still won't, won't admit that they... You know, they, they're actually playing pretty good out there. Jalen but. Hurts, ring a bell when, when that yeah. comes at all? There you go. Yeah. The, the people in the offseason who thought Jalen Hurts wasn't going to be any good, I'm not talking people who thought he was going to be this good or an MVP candidate, but a lot of people thought the Eagles needed to move on. Jalen Hurts couldn't do this, couldn't do that. Those people's phones have suddenly broken. Their, uh, their radio connections have, have suddenly gone away. <laughs> but we're here. We're, we're, you know, we talk about the Flyers. They're not playing well. The seventh place in the Metro Division as they go out west. What has Carter Hart done for you as a Flyer fan this year behind, behind that uh, net? Well, that is the topic I want to get into. Net. As a casual fan, I, recently his name popped up in trade rumors. Does this injury? Carter Hart? Yeah. Who's, whose rumors were that? Oh, hold on a second. Let me, I got to go on I mean, my, Anybody's uh, tradable, Chris. I'm, I'm somebody who believes there's no untouchables in this world. I would trade Wayne Gretzky in his prime. In fact, he was traded in his prime. If somebody offers me enough, makes me a John Gotti offer that I can't refuse. But I have not heard anything in any way 
about a team wanting Carter Hart, it would cost, I mean, obviously you would trade him if somebody offered you enough, but nobody's going to offer you close to what it's going to take. And it would be interesting to see where you read that. But I, he's played very well this year. It's unusual because at the beginning of the year, the Flyers won a bunch of games, if you remember. They, they jumped out to a very fast start. Carter Hart saving the bacon over and over and over again with defensive injuries and a young defense. And, and then Carter Hart became human for a little while. And the Flyers took a dive because talent can only hold up so far if your goalie's not standing on his head. Now he's playing better again. But I think he's, he's certainly a keeper for me. I'm not trading him if I'm Chuck Fletcher. I, just, I mean, I can't say I'm not going to trade him because if I was offered 11 number one picks and, and, and 12 great young players, I would do that. But that's not going to happen. Well, I mean, maybe this is more of a report. This is a... Something came up in my search from Broad Street Buzz, but more about a little hot take there from the fact that it, it might make sense. Oh, and it, what are you going to get for him? I mean, I'm not doing a, a, a even trade. If I'm if I'm trading Carter Hart, I'm getting the steal of the century because I'm going to be looked at as an idiot for doing that. Um, what, what did it say? The offer, whatever offer they thought about might, might be coming was. I don't know. I mean, I think it just speaks to the other deficiencies on the team, and it. Like you said, nobody's untouchable. If they could get a king's ransom, you know, maybe it's something that they would think about, and that seems to be one of the pieces that might bring a king's ransom that actually has some, some value. Maybe that's just a, within the Philadelphia. I mean, anything's possible, Chris. I'm not going right. to sit here and tell you something's impossible if I don't directly control it. But I would be beyond, 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 beyond shocked if, if any deal for Carter Hart was to go down, you have a goalie that looks like a foundation piece, 24 years old. I'm, I know how much my heart jumped into my throat last Thursday when in a kind of a mop-up situation, he got run in front of the net and looked like he got hurt. Upper body injury. Anybody watching thought, yeah, that's probably a head injury. Hope he's okay. He skated off the ice immediately. Never a good sign. Um, and he's on his reserve, but hopefully he can be back in a game or two. But... Um, there's so many holes in this team. I don't think they're going to do a lot before the trade deadline. Certainly not Carter Hart. I don't even think Chuck Fletcher, and, and we'll see how long he keeps his job. Dave Scott, the, the head of Comcast Petco, the, the owners of the team, he can't have much patience. Said last year he expects to win and win within the year, talking last year in an interview in which he was with Chuck Fletcher. Where does he go? What do you do? Do you, do you trade for anything? Flyers are not one or two pieces away from being a playoff team, so maybe he stands pat. Sells a couple guys off that John Tortorella may not want. Maybe a Kevin Hayes. Maybe anybody. Who knows? But I think they're going to go that route. Uh, but, again, I, there's no way they're trading Carter Hart. I mean, the other team that is very loosely linked with this whole rumor, Vegas. I mean, any rumors are, rumors are rumors. And to me, I, I work on this theory. Rumors are rumors until they come true. And for every 8,000 that are out there, one comes true. And again, this could, anyone could. I'm not saying I haven't been shocked before. Reading the internet, picking up the paper, hearing on the radio, watching on TV that so-and-so got, when Gretzky got traded. I remember the date, Chris, August 9th, 1988, 34 years ago. I was just a kid. And Wayne Gretzky was traded. What? Who did what? Because Peter Pocklington, the owner of the Edmonton Oilers, had no money, needed cash, got $15 million in the deal from, from the Kings, five players, number one picks. And I, everybody in the hockey world was stunned. Wayne Gretzky had only been nine times in a row, nine, the MVP, and was traded at the age of 27 after nine consecutive MVPs. But that showed that everybody's got a price. Carter Hart wouldn't cost that much, but he's not going to cost anything that anybody's willing to pay. Vegas having a nice year out west, but, uh, but we'll see. You ever take your daughter to Disney on ice? It, it always inhabits the spectrum the week between Christmas and New Year's. Sixers out of town. After a long homestand, Flyers in California for three before they come back? Or? I think we got some tickets years ago, but I, I was fortunate enough to avoid that fate for myself. <laughs> I was talking this week with, uh, uh, I, he better be unnamed. I don't think he wants to be named. He's taking his two kids to Disney on Ice this week, an athlete that's going to be on one of our shows in the near future. Okay. And I said, sir, not saying sir, but the name again will remain. I'll tell you during the break. And, uh, I said, you're going to take your two kids, you're going to have popcorn and, and whatever else you get them and souvenirs and the smiles on their faces are going to be mile wide and you're going to be looking up in the sky going, when do we get to drive home? <laughs> is it but, over yet? Yeah, I mean, kids can't go by themselves. It's, uh, Disney on Ice is a, 
I, it's a fun thing that the kids love. It's been there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And one generation to the next generation to the next generation. It is what it is, right? Just drop them off at the front door. Drop them off at the front door, which unfortunately you can't do when they're four and two. But uh, T- Teletubbies live. Teletubbies live. There we are. Um, <laughs> what'd you do for your uh, Christmas? What are you doing for your New Year? Uh, your typical gift exchange, and we're sleeping in now for Christmas. It's kind of more laid back. What do you call sleeping chill. in? Uh, I think we were up around nine, nine thirty. What's normal? Like six. Uh, you know, like year, years gone by when there's a lot of Christmas excitement. Who knows when the the eyes might pop open? All right, never Six know. Six in the morning. We're going to go a little cross-pollination on this show. We like to do that a lot on the Eagles well, show. How about you, Paul? You have a, a great holiday season so far? I've yeah, I mean, it's just uh, my wife's mother died earlier this year, so this is her first holidays. Kind of colors everything. And, yeah, yeah right. I mean, there's, no way, I, there's nothing I can do. There's right. nothing any spouse can do whatever. Everybody's just got to get over that on their own. But we had a nice holiday at our cousin's house and had a great time. Um, I'm trying to figure out what to do for New Year's. But one of the traditions that was around for a few years in a row, are the Flyers playing on New Year's? They used to have a, a West Coast swing, right, that would start Flyers, around this time. Flyers are playing on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve night, right? Give, yeah, New, well, New Year's Eve, I think it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon against the Kings. I'll give you their, their schedule for their road trip here. As we reach to it, I know the games, but I don't know the order. I don't want to give anybody the wrong information. Well, you know, maybe we should uh, step aside real quick. and Yeah, we'll take a step aside. Good idea. Take a quick break, and we'll, we'll give you the flyer schedule on the way back when they come home. Todd Fedork will get here. We'll talk with him. He's doing some great work in uh, drug and alcohol abuse counseling. Played a bunch of years in the NHL. Got some great stories. We'll talk about those. Keith Primo will be here. Talk about our Flyer of the Week. In fact, that's what we'll do right now. You're listening to On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross, live from Chickens and Pete's in Glassboro. We're here on 1490 WBCB. And it's time for the Independence Blue Cross Live Fearless Player of the Week. Each week we reward a Flyer with this honor. And this week, Scott Lawton played well. Travis Connecting played well. But they only played one game in this Wednesday to Wednesday week. So the uh, Flyer of the Week is Samuel Urson makes his NHL debut behind the Nets in Carolina. Comes out. Carter Hart gets hurt. Urson goes back in. He'll also start tomorrow in San Jose. Remember to choose Independence Blue Cross today and begin to live fearless. Paul Jolovitz, our producer Chris Irmer filling in while Todd Fedorik gets here from work and Keith Primo gets here from a little uh, jumble in communications. And we're going to be back at Chickies and Pete's right after this. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's. The holidays bring out our seasonal favorites. Try our garlic truffle burger topped with Gruyere garlicky truffle mushrooms, arugula, and truffle aioli. And sink your teeth into our spicy Thai peanut wings, classic or bonus. Pair any of our seasonal menu items with one of our holiday specialty cocktails, like the chocolate raspberry martini or the you're a mean one signature cocktail. Sure to put a smile on the Grinch himself. And don't forget our world famous crab fries, Chickie's and Pete's. At Independence Blue Cross, we believe in giving you the tools you need to pursue your healthiest life. From premiums as low as $0 per month to health discounts and cash rewards, it pays to have coverage with Independence. With the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free 24-7 virtual doctor visits, you can feel confident that quality care is always within reach. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie B's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie B's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V-Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Seafood. Payroll Service Solutions was established in 2001 to cater to the payroll needs of small to medium-sized businesses. Payroll Service Solutions offers unparalleled customer service while they deliver a complete and accurate payroll. When calling Payroll Service Solutions, you will never be put into a voicemail or go through a series of prompts to get to a person. All customer service representatives are extensively trained to handle all of your payroll needs, therefore saving you time. They value each and every one of their clients. No account is too small. 
Call Payroll Service Solutions today at 1-866-PAY-EASY for a no-obligation review of your payroll needs. That number again is 1-866-PAYEASY. Payroll Service Solutions. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and former Flyers captain, Keith Primo. All righty, Paul Jalovitz back here at Chickies and Pete's in Glassboro on a beautiful Wednesday. It feels like it's 98 out there because it was 12 over the weekend or something close to that, maybe a little warmer, a little cooler. Now it's like 50. So when it's 50 in the winter and it's been freezing, it feels like 100. If it was 50 on August 3rd, it would feel like zero relatively, and, and that's the way life works. That's the way life works with our show also, because Todd Fedorik again will get here in a little while, traveling from work. Keith Primo got tangled up in traffic due to my problem, my fault. I'll take the blame 100%. So basically, we're without anybody for a few minutes here at Chicks and Pete's. So when uh, in doubt, invite guests on that, that come to your show. We have Richard Brogan here who comes to our show, and we have... Endless thanks to him. He comes from Scranton every Monday for, for the Monday night kickoff from the Hard Rock Cafe that opened last Monday night again after renovations. Beautiful to hear the chickies in peace. Richard, thanks for coming. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. It's what do you now? You do something for a living that's not exactly uh, <coughs> down, down the middle of the hockey spectrum. Tell everybody what you do. Uh, I'm an accountant. Real life people do real life things and just yes. like hockey. And, um, you, you said you're primarily a football and a baseball fan, huh? Primarily football and baseball, yes. And uh, what do you do up in Scranton with that? Anybody, uh, you go see the, the minor league baseball teams? We do. It's uh, the Rail Riders up there now. It used to be the Red Barons, the yeah, AAA, AAA for the yeah. Phillies, but now it's the Rail Riders. So. Who's the best player you saw in a minor league uniform in Scranton, either for the <laughs> Phillies team or the Yankees team or an opposing team? Did you see Aaron Judge, for example? Oh, yes. Yes, saw him a few times. What about the My best Philly? Best Philly? Uh, I would have to say Howard or uh, Morandini. I, I remember Howard or Morandini? I love yeah. Mickey Morandini, but Ryan Howard, I would Ryan think. Ryan Howard, yeah. yes. Uh, so I remember, you know, the Jimmy Rollins coming through Scranton. The nice. Ryan Howard, the Mickey Morandini, the they Chase all Utley. Do. They all came through there. So. Well, it's interesting, Richard. I mean, you're a fan, and God bless the... The sports world wouldn't exist without fans. Fans are the, are the economics of sports. I mean, you don't pay uh, you in, in global fashion, and, and there's no sports. Interesting how sports are different in the way they're engineered. Most, uh, basically all, I mean, there's been exceptions over the years. Every baseball player heads to the minors, especially the kids who are drafted at 18. There's no 18-year-olds in the majors. Yeah, Mike Trout, Bryce Harbour, minute when they were 19, they both played in the minors. Hockey bunch of players playing the minors too, but you can go right to the NHL at 18. Does it interest you? I mean, basketball, obviously there's no minors. There's a G League now, which some guys play in. Gotten bigger the last few years, but number one picks primarily go right to the uh, right to the show. NFL, they go right to the show. There is no minor league. As a fan like you, I mean, what do you think about an 18-year-old kid playing a professional sport with grown men? Uh, and other sports, it's different. Does that interest you at all? It does. I just don't think they go through the natural progression that they played at the collegiate level first. Most of these people don't play at the collegiate level. Connor yeah. Bedard, for example, the pro proposed number one pick of anybody in the NHL draft this year. Um, if you can watch the World Juniors now, Russia's banned, but you can watch it in Edmonton, see all the young players that will be drafted. Connor Bedard, first among them. There's a center from Michigan who's right behind him, Adam. I can't remember his last name at the present time, but you get a chance to see these guys. They never play college. They go straight from juniors or high school in basketball like Kobe did. Obviously, basketball, you have to play a year in college now or a year somewhere. Um, 
Let's just, say the Flyers get a Connor Bedard. Do you know who Connor Bedard is, for example? I do not. Remember Sidney Crosby when he came up? Yes. There, there are kids that, that just are the one, the next one. Wayne Gretzky, obviously, in 1979. Could have played in the NHL when he was eight, if you listen to a lot of people <laughs> in Canada. Maybe not quite, but, but Connor Bedard and other people. I mean, I guess we're talking about expectations. When a fan like yourself drives 100 miles, which you have to go to to see major sports, whether you go to New York City or Philadelphia, you can go anywhere you want if you want to go further, but you come here to our show every week. When you go to a game and you, and you see this kid, Connor Bedard, for example, if, he, if the Flyers get the number one pick and take him next year, and another guy was a fifth-round draft pick playing pretty well, do expectations determine your level of interest in a person? If a, if a fifth-round draft pick winds up being great, but Connor Bedard doesn't, I mean, Guys are guys, but expectations are pretty much everything as to how you deal with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would think, you know, <clears throat> you'd be a little <clears throat> a little upset or sure. a little set back because you expect that. And the at- Flyers have had high draft picks. We were yes. talking about Morgan Frost, Chris, and I. <clears throat> and Nolan Patrick, who's maybe out of hockey now. He's with Vegas. He's out for the year with an injury. He may never come back. I wish the kid well. I don't wish anybody anything but well. But the Flyer draft picks, I mean... They, they could have had Cal McCarr. They didn't take him. They could have had a bunch of people. Bad drafts can doom a team for a few years, and the Flyers yes. are kind of an example of that, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Can you think of any that have worked out in the last couple of years? I don't want to put you on the spot here. That's not what, <laughs> I, not what I'm here for, not what I asked you to come on for. So just tell me I'm putting you on the spot. You're and putting me on the spot. All right. <laughs> Why do you come down every week to, to football? It's great to have you. We're thrilled to have someone come down from Scranton every week who's got a real job and has a real life and teaches and uh, helping kids fulfill their dreams. Heck, I was an accounting major in college. Why do you, why do you come down to the shows? Uh, I just enjoy them. Just an overall Philly sports fan. Like getting out, like listening to the shows, meeting the people. Uh, you know, I like to collect, you know, the sports memorabilia. You get so the autographs get of the, the autographs. Uh, I give a lot out in my office when you know, I get a few pictures signed, and I keep them. And then when kids come into my accounting office with their parents and they're running around the board. Where do you teach, first board, of all, sir? I teach accounting. No, where? Oh, I teach a few schools. Uh, I've taught at, over the last 15 years, Bloomsburg University, Misericordia University, Northampton Community College, uh, University of Cincinnati, online. That one's online. I'd say that's a long trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luzerne County Community College. So various schools at the adjunct level. All right, Richard, I'm going to give you the question then that I got in college that every other accounting <coughs> student on the planet Earth in any language anywhere has gotten. If you're an accounting student and you're asked what's two plus two, what's the answer? Five. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the answer is what do you want it to be? <laughs> exactly. That's the job of accounting. Yes. Job yep. of sports is a little more defined. Um, interesting that you come down, you like to get the autographs. We've had plenty of great guests, I hope. Uh, oh, yeah. that, that, that lure people into Chickies and Peach, which is nice enough to have our show and has been for years, the Hard Rock Cafe for, for our Eagles show. Who's the number one guy? Who's somebody who you've gotten an autograph of who you might have thought, not bad, that then turned into a superstar and you have something that, that you're proud to display a little bit more than you would have been otherwise, either football or hockey? I would say <clears throat> Deshaun Jackson. Not he bad. was my, my son's favorite athlete when he was younger and just growing up and then so I would say he was probably uh, <clears throat> our favorite to me and that we display quite a bit. All right you got the, the shirt Intercept Cancer yes. which is the NFL's initiative obviously all sports all people everybody's against cancer that's not exactly like a news flash but for me personally I, obviously I've been touched by cancer with several people, so of you, I assume. Yes. You see at the World Series in Game 5 when everybody, I mean everybody in the arena, in the stadium, including the umpires, the players, the broadcasters, holds up the card with whoever they're, they're rooting for. Does it, wearing that shirt, I mean, the Eagles are trying to beat the brains out of the Saints this weekend. Obviously, the Cowboys, Giants, and everybody else ultimately get to a Super Bowl. The Flyers are trying to beat the brains out literally and, and figuratively sometimes. But we're all on the same team, Cowboy fans, Eagle fans, Ranger fans. Flyer fans, for that cancer thing, how, how does that make you feel as just a human being to know that sports can play such a big part in hopefully raising money to defeat things that we all want to defeat? 
Absolutely. I, uh, I'm glad to see they take such an active part of it with the uh, intercept cancer. I also like I'm a veteran, so I like to salute the service stuff. Veteran of what? Give yourself a plug. <laughs> Uh, I served in the US, U.S. Navy and then the Army, Army National Guard. Both? Yeah, I served active duty on the Navy and then went with the Pennsylvania Army National Guard Reserves. We're well, getting to know you tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Uh, let me, I mean, Chris can thank you himself. I was going to thank you for all of us, but thank you so much for your service. Uh, did, did you see accident in combat? I did not, thankfully. But you were the Navy <clears throat> first and then the Army? Correct. And just a big sports fan in Scranton. Big, big sports fan in Scranton. What's the vibe up there, Richard, about... We've got a quick second before a second break. What's the vibe up there for uh, Philly sports in general? Winning now, the Phillies get to the World Series. Eagles are doing well. We all know the Flyers, <laughs> Flyers and Sixers situation. Scranton's about 90, 100 miles up the turnpike. Yes. Not closer to any other city. Is it a big Philly city? Are there fans, but it's not... I mean, like the Eagles make the Super Bowl. Are there parades and, 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 and stuff on cars and, and honking horns? Or is it pretty much, yeah, I'm a Philly fan, but this is Scranton, not Philly. Yes, it's exactly. It's so mixed up there from Pittsburgh to Giants to Jets. You know, it's so mixed. Jets. Yeah, there's a lot of Jets. Where are they playing up. these days? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the vibe up there. You ever go down in that coal mine, <laughs> Jolly? Oh, yeah, I have. Black and yeah. white coal mine. Yeah. yeah. Are you from Pittsburgh? No. So I, I thought you had a little Pittsburgh twang. Maybe that's a Scranton twang. It's a Scranton twang. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you, Richard Brogan. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. Into the New Year. We'll try to have the best shows we can for you. And you can be on the other side of the mic and get autographs and 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 just have a great time at Chickies and, and let it rock. And we appreciate your patronage. And, uh, again, well, now, have a great I, New Year. Thank Let, you. Let's develop a segment around Rich somehow. we got to figure out <laughs> the, the Brogan <laughs> Nugget. <laughs> broken nugget. The broken nugget. If you, if you depreciate uh, an instrument in an accelerated fashion, I don't, I don't want to give a kind of question. Nobody wants to hear Is that. that like a fortune cookie, a word of wisdom <laughs> word from of Richard. Wisdom. There, there we are. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Richard, for being with us. Really appreciate it. It's time now for the Smart Start of the Week, brought to you by Payroll Service Solutions. Call them today at one eight six six pay easy That's one eight six six pay easy Alexander Ovechkin. He's not a flyer. He's a capital Scored his 802nd goal on December 23rd against Winnipeg. Passing Gordie Howe, whose son Mark is a Hall of Fame flyer and moving into second place all-time in the NHL. Behind Wayne Gretzky's 894. Some stats are so remarkable that they get to be stat of the week, even if you're not a flyer. And Alex Ovechkin made it this week. That was your Flyers Smart Stat of the Week. Once again, brought to you by Payroll Service Solutions. Call them today at one eight six six pay easy for the smart choice in payroll services. Payroll Service Solutions. Catering the small and medium-sized business to handle all of your payroll needs. Call them once again at 1-866-PAY-EASY. Different kind of show tonight waiting for our guest and co-host. Oh, hey, I got a, uh, a smart stat of the week. Yes, sir. This is the first time we've had a guest come up and join us on the radio for a show. First That's time my forever. stat. First yeah. time forever. The first. <laughs> first time for everything. Thank you That's so much, one. Mr. Brogan. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, we're going to be back with On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. From beautiful chicks and peas where people are watching, having a good time in this holiday season, right after this. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's. Our seasonal menu items are now available at all Chickies and Pete's locations. Enjoy our bomb pork belly tacos or share a plate of South Philly crab fries featuring our world-famous crab fry cheese sauce. Topped with porchetta-style pork belly, fried onions, and shaved provolone. Don't miss our specialty cocktails like the stateside mint chocotini or cranberry margarita. Pick up some Chickie and Pete's gift cards. The perfect gift for everyone on your holiday list. Chickies and Pete's. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. 
From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. Payroll Service Solutions was established in 2001 to cater to the payroll needs of small to medium-sized businesses. Payroll Service Solutions offers unparalleled customer service while they deliver a complete and accurate payroll. When calling Payroll Service Solutions, you will never be put into a voicemail or go through a series of prompts to get to a person. All customer service representatives are extensively trained to handle all of your payroll needs, therefore saving you time. They value each and every one of their clients. No account is too small. Call Payroll Service Solutions today at 1-866-PAY-EASY for a no-obligation review of your payroll needs. That number again is 1-866-PAYEASY. Payroll Service Solutions. If you are looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Seafood. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jolovitz and former Flyers captain, Keith Primo. All righty, Paul Jolovitz here, Keith and Todd, Keith Primo, Todd Fedoruk. We'll be here in just a minute. We appreciate their stick to on this holiday day. Uh, one fighting through traffic, the other a problem at work that he had to settle in that real life intervenes. We just had Richard Brogan on for a few minutes. I have been bombarded during the break by representatives from the Jimmy Fallon show, the Oprah Winfrey show. President Biden called and asked if Richard's available. Just joking, but thank you to Richard so much for, uh, for talking with us for a few minutes. We're here at Chickies and Peace again, and Beautiful Glassboro on the campus of Rowan University. Chris, uh, nice little block they've developed here in Rowan. Uh, it's just a bunch right in the middle of the campus, uh, out of nowhere, retail uh, popping up out of nowhere. So brick and mortar stores still have some place in this world, huh? Yeah, and you know, it's not a busy time of year on campus, but it's hopping at Chickies tonight. It is hopping at Chickies tonight. Chickies and Pete's such a great place. They're nice enough to do our shows and, and, and other shows. Merrill's on WBCB. They got a great menu. Pete is, is a carnival barker, bar non extraordinaire. You hear him on, on all kinds of stations with his promos, and they got a menu that gets you in and out of here. It's delicious. They got TVs, they got lights, the atmosphere, the ambiance. Jigs and Peace really has it all done. It? No question. Hey, again, as a casual fan, I want to put you on the spot. All right. What is your take? Do you think that this Flyers team, I mean, I, they obviously need to improve all around, but. More on offense, more on defense. Well, I, I believe in my, my personal view of sports in general, every sport, obviously everyone's different, is if you have a bad defense, you don't really have a very good team. I mean, you can, with, sports are full of teams that have good offenses, which obviously you want to play in high scoring contests and anything and everything and wind up losing 86 to 85 or 98 in hockey or whatever. Give me that defense that can stop the puck goalie that can stop from going to the net, and marginal offense can get it done. I've seen great defensive teams win. Great offensive teams have won titles in certain sports. The greatest show on turf in, in the you know St. Louis with the Rams. Give me a defensive team, a goaltender, because for the last 30 years, we've been, Flyers have been in the Stanley Cup final. They've done a lot of stuff offensively. They've needed that goaltender. It looks like they've got it, building a young defense around him. Make a long story short, defense. I, mean, I, I guess I just want the, uh, some flash. G- give me. I want g- Flash too. I mean, you need both if you want to win a Stanley Cup. Right. I mean, you look at Colorado last year. They got Kyle McCarr, probably the best defenseman in the sport. Connor McDavid, if you say he's the best player in hockey, Kyle McCarr is, in, in most opinions, 
a pretty close second. You got Nathan McKinnon, a great forward. You got other great forwards on that team. You have a solid defense. Their goaltender was solid enough last year to win him a cup. Uh, I just think you have to build from the goal out. I think Chuck Fletcher's trying to do that. Cam York spent the first 20 games, give or take, in the minors this year. He came up, played the University of Michigan. He played in the World Juniors. Are you watching that, by the way? Uh, at all the, the the World Junior Tournament in Edmonton, you know where where would I watch it? Is it on ESPN? Uh, NHL Network. Oh yeah, no, no. It's good. I mean, you're talking about the the hockey of the future. If if somebody just walked into a room, if somebody watching the World Juniors, I should check it out because it sounds like something that would appeal to me. It's like youth athletics. Future it's pure, pros. The, the and besides that all though, I just love like the purity yeah. of athletes that are playing for the love of the game and not necessarily for their future but just for their country because that's what they're doing yeah to represent their families yeah. and their nation and all that stuff it's high quality hockey you can probably tell the difference if you know really what you're looking at because you're watching 17 and 18 19 year old kids but the best in the world 17 18 and 19 minus russia who uh committed a little two minutes for slashing in ukraine earlier this year and got banned from this tournament them in Belarus. Uh, in fact, the tournament next year was supposed to be in Russia, got moved to two Canadian cities. It's in Edmonton this year, so we will see the Flyers. A six-day break over the holidays. They play tomorrow night. The NHL took a four-day break, Chris. In hockey, there's a neat thing that, that no other sport has. They have a Christmas trade freeze. You're not allowed to be traded from like the 19th to 27th. I'm not sure the exact days, but the athletes get some time off. NBA plays, obviously, Bunch of games on Christmas Day, different philosophies, different ways of slicing the same orange. Which way do you like it? I guess I like the freeze. I mean, it, it protects the players. Protects the players, protects players from being traded. Speaking of protecting the players, we have a player here, Mr. Todd Fedorik, Fridge. Uh, we're talking about the NHL trade freeze. Thanks for coming, buddy. Todd's I guess, getting his headset on. I guess somebody with a name like Fridge would like the trade freeze. <laughs> yeah. Did you like that? Uh, Todd Fedora and Keith Primo getting here at the same time. How about that? Tag teaming us. We got everybody now. We got the crew in the house. What? I just got here too. Richard Brogan. We're working men now. From guys from Scranton, our guest, the first Nine to segment. five <laughs> Scranton. Yep. All right. Had a few tilts in that barn. All right, so let's see. We, we got to sprint toward the wire. Thanks both guys for coming. Fridge. Uh, happy holidays, Jolly. Happy holidays to you. You're doing some... Pretty cool work these days. You were late, you're delayed by work. Tell everybody what you're doing right now. Um, I work with um, in, in behavioral health, so uh, in healthcare what? industry, behavioral health, so mental health, behavioral, oh, behavioral health. health, yeah, uh, in the healthcare industry with a, a company called uh, New, Life New Life Medical Addiction Services. Yeah, so. in rehab, you had problems early in your career, and and you're taking that and, and, and giving help, and that's that's. Uh, in this holiday season, a lot of people would call that the ultimate blessing, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes people have some struggles in life, and there's always help, always hope, and there's always places to go. And it's prevalent in the in, or in, uh, in society now, so there's a lot more places to access care. And Mr. Primo, hey. you're here after I uh, gave you a bit of incorrect information. No idea where that came from. I'm wondering <laughs> myself, but you're a team player and, and got here. What do, you, what do you think of the NHL's four-day break over the holidays? The NBA plays... Five games on Christmas Day. It's a big part of the NBA season. Nobody plays on Christmas Day in the NHL. Flyers have a longer break than most. Uh, what do you think of that? Um, I, I don't like it. You don't like <laughs> I, it? No. I commit one way or the other. Either play over the over Christmas, like basketball and football, or extend the, the break. You have you have guys that uh, uh, that they play on the 23rd, maybe out of town, even if they're in town. We, we just had this terrible storm. Um, Buffalo had the worst storm yeah, ever. And, but, and, yeah. and there's no way to get home for, for the 24th, 25th, and fly out on the 25th or the 26th, to turn around and play on the 27th. So either give them a week so they can actually enjoy the, the holiday or play through because guys are in town. Interesting that you look at it that way. Todd, you would have been interesting for your break. You're from Alberta, which is there was, exactly I right. never got a break. I always had, I had this guy being like, look, we get to break because we play a lot, but yeah. you got to keep working out because we're going to need you when we get back. <laughs> and you know what? That, that was the case for the guys that were like lower in the lineup. You, you worked through those breaks. You trained, you made sure because they needed rest. Like that's the way that the game was structured. The bodies were bigger. The game was harder. It was cool. harder to be played. It was a heavier game. 
and the we relied on. Like their minutes were higher, and then the lower lower line guys or the guys that didn't play as much that were in another lineup. You guys just had to stay ready. So it was there was two different worlds when I played. Well, I guess we <laughs> Chris and I were talking about speaking honestly during the first segment. Morgan Frost started to play a little better. Was ripped by a lot of people earlier this year, as were a lot of draft picks that hadn't played that well. Morgan Frost looks like he's turned the corner a little bit. How far he goes, we'll see. But here's a direct question to both of you guys. You played together with the Flyers a little bit. You played, like you said, a different game. Has hockey been wussified at all? <laughs> it's softer. It's it's well, a softer game softer. because they've they've they steered towards speed and and skill and um, it just. I guess that's a byproduct of the, the evolution, is that it, it's become a softer game because, I don't know, you can't, it's too hard to hit a guy. Like, I would be tentative to hit a person in the manner that I game. used to yeah. because you're thinking about three or four items even before you lay the check. Like, oh, I got to make sure my principal point of contact is in the middle of the body, at the sternum, not aligned. Like, it's just, it's too hard to actually play physical. And I think the coaches have moved away from actually coaching, finish your check. Keep your speed, swing away, stick check as much as possible. I'm obviously always going to be biased to the other way. Finish the check, play them through. They're better off laying on their arse on the ice and getting up while you're coming back to position. And, it, and, I, and I agree, and it was evolution by design. So you know, we came out of the lockout with all these rule changes. And, and, I, and I, my opinion from, right from the get-go was, hey, listen, open up the game through the neutral zone. I remember when that was yeah. fun early in my career, getting through the neutral zone with, you know, with speed, no hooks, no... And, and nobody impeding your progress, uh, but to let let the game let let the game be played out in the, in the in the end zones. Let let there be competition. Like that's what the game is. It's still about competition, and and now it's just it is. It's speed and skill, and that's great if that's if that's your preference. But I, I, I don't know where the competitiveness comes in because it's it's just been it's been it's been nullified. So if you want to call it wussified, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, interesting. So I got that from Governor Randell. We're going to come back. I'm going to ask you guys both a question that Chris asked me during the first segment. I'll keep it a secret. So we come back. Todd and Keith will answer that and talk much more about a bunch of things. Final segment coming up, 15 minutes, with the great Keith Primo, the great Todd Fedorik, who's doing great work these days. Back at On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross, from Chickens and Pete's in Glassboro. Keith Primo, Todd Fedorik, Chris Sommer, our producer. Back right after this. Hi, it's Pete from Chickens and Pete's. This holiday season, the Feast of the Seven Fishes has never been easier than with the help of Chickies and Pete's to-go catering. All your favorites, riverboat clams, mussels, lobster tails, calamari, and more. Same-day pickup available on all orders placed before 4 p.m. Treat your family to an amazing Feast of the Seven Fishes without the stress, hassle, and time to put all that together. From our table to yours, Chickies and Pete's. Ho, ho. At Independence Blue Cross, we believe in giving you the tools you need to pursue your healthiest life. From premiums as low as $0 per month to health discounts and cash rewards, it pays to have coverage with Independence. With the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free 24-7 virtual doctor visits, you can feel confident that quality care is always within reach. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Prime Seafood. Payroll Service Solutions was established in 2001 to cater to the payroll needs of small to medium-sized businesses. Payroll Service Solutions offers unparalleled customer service while they deliver a complete and accurate payroll. When calling Payroll Service Solutions, you will never be put into a voicemail or go through a series of prompts to get to a person. All customer service representatives are extensively trained to handle all of your payroll needs, therefore saving you time. They value each and every one of their clients. No account is too small. Call Payroll Service Solutions today at 1-866-PAYEASY. 
for a no-obligation review of your payroll needs. That number again is 1-866-PAYEASY. Payroll Service Solutions. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and former Flyers captain, Keith Primo. All righty, back with Independence Blue Cross On the Ice from Chickies and Pete's in Glassboro. We only have a few minutes with Keith and Todd, which we love every week. Next week, our guest is NHL ref, former NHL ref, Kerry Fraser. Um, Chris asked me a question, guys, right at the top of the show. If you had to build a team from nowhere, literally from nowhere, which is close to what the Flyers are doing, would you try to build it from the defensive end or the offensive end? Would you rather have a flashy offense or a great defense and great goalie if you had to start with one of the two? Whoever wants to go first, do so. I'll go. All right. Defense. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Why? Defense wins championships. Yeah. yeah. yeah you got, you got to, <laughs> it's, like, it's like building the foundation, right? You build, you're building your house. You can't build the first or second floor without the without the build the roof first. You're in trouble, yeah, right? Yeah, it yeah. It just doesn't work that way. So and it's interesting because you're a center. Obviously, mm-hmm. centers have to play D. Everybody has to play D. But you made your name pretty much on the offensive side of the rink. But you saying that really reinforced it for a lot of people. I mean, it's just you. you centers you are your best defensive players. Yeah, yeah, but you can't. <laughs> but you can't win every game. You can't win every game six five and and uh, you've got to find a, find a way to defend and. Um, so, uh, for me, it would be defense. All right, Carter Hart's on injury reserve for a game. Concussion, I guess, protocol. Injury suffered last week. Have, wh- Flyers have had terrible luck this year, but now you put a kid, Sam Erson, for his first NHL game, his NHL debut, gets yanked in the second period. Carter Hart comes in, gets run, gets hurt. Really, I mean, it, come on, right? It's not, it's not funny, but it's... It's beca- it's be- it's comical. I mean, he, he, he gives up the kid. Poor kid gives up five goals. Carter Hart goes in, gives up a goal, gets hurt, and ends up with the loss. Yep. You know what I mean? And like, loses a couple games too. It looks like. Yeah, and and is now going to be out for a couple games. So, um, I mean, those are the challenges of you know professional hockey at, at, at every level, and you just got to fight through the adversity and find ways to keep your chin up and. And plow forward, but uh, it's sometimes it's pretty hard. It, it is. I, I want to ask Fridge a question. We're having to freeze dry everything, we don't have as much time. About a guy named Derek Bugard, Fridge. Yeah. So you fought in the NHL, um, had some problems with, with that particular fight, but then got traded to Minnesota, played for multiple teams other than the Flyers in your career, got traded to Minnesota, developed a friendship with this guy who you had this fight with, yeah. and it, it led to. A lot of changes in your life. Am I right? Can you can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I mean, personal stuff, not really. I don't want to really drag it up for a show like this in this setting. But, uh, no, you, you become close to guys and teammates, and there's history because he's a Western guy, and I remember him from 15 years old. So, And he was that big then. But um, playing against a guy like that, obviously, he's tied to me because of the, some of the injuries. Like one, one might call him career ending injuries but there's sometimes there's you have career changing injuries so and that's really changed the trajectory of my my career because i was a fighter and i needed the the ability to take a punch you ever fight a guy named keith primo (laughs) no no chance no no chance was i stepping in the ring for that one (laughs) really no friggy was a primo's got me ready for a lot of fights i was watching today on nhl network there there are a few people flies i had a few of them who can play the game, obviously win Norris trophies or other trophies, and fight with the best in the league. Oh, then Chris Pronger comes to my mind. Nah. No. As a no? fighter? No. As a no. fighter, he can no. handle himself. No. No. No? no. Am I missing go, yeah, yeah, Maybe one or two? No. Yeah, I mean, Prongs was, was, yeah. was I, I, I challenged Prongs. Tough player. Yeah. Played right. tough. Who do you take, him? 
Fridge and prongs, three rounds. What? Come on. That's embarrassing you yeah. asked that question. Fridge minus 900? Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. My, oh, my God. <laughs> that's not even in the same stratosphere. You should look. I don't know how many. Well, he probably doesn't have many fights, five-minute majors under his belt that were fights. No. no. I mean, you don't want a guy tough. like that Who's fighting. the toughest guy you ever fought in your career? Toughest guy? Oh, I'd have to say, well... Well, Bugard, but I mean, the most da he's dangerous, but tough. Vanderbush was a tough. See, th I, those guys were the toughest to me. The guys that were not, not, not the small hero type guys, the I little sleeper me. guys. Yeah. Well, no, Vanderbush was another, another level. That guy was just tough, could take a punch. I thought guys like that were, were real tough. You know, you I'm hard to fight. I had a hard time with little hard, guys. Yeah, those guys are hard. They and get around you, they're no quick. Win, right? Like, bang, bang, bang. like Ty Domi was so the same So you would way. consider yourself a light heavyweight, and Todd, who's pretty much the same size you are, would be a heavyweight oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, hockey yeah. circles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, did, you yeah. Used to, did, did you ever fight the goons? Did you ever I, I had to sometimes, just because yeah. the way I was going to play, too. And then as a leader, you know, standing up for your teammates. and I... I, I I did more of it actually early in my career when I was trying to, you know, kind of make my path. Um, I didn't fight as much towards the end of my career. I, j I just fought out of um, uh, need or, de or necessity. Um, Size. Sometimes they try to pigeonhole you in, and I think he was well, the that guy was, that uh, broke the mold. Yeah, he, cause boy, he, I think you guys, you were one of the first guys that's like, yeah, I'm 6'5". I got some size, but look what I can do. <laughs> and it was, I can play. And that was my tribulation in, in, in Detroit was, you know, I, I go out and get in a fight, and it was, why didn't you score a goal? And I go out and score two goals, and it was, why didn't you fight? <laughs> and and that, that's God honest truth. And it was a no win for me there, and, you know, and that's you know, part of my history. But, but um, uh, yeah, I, saw, I fought some tough guys, not, not because I wanted to sometimes, but because I had to. Situations, right? Yeah, yeah he's yeah. a game. Oh, there's a situation with the Flyers right now, Todd. You just talked about leadership. Flyers are playing without a captain right now. Some people think that's meaningless. Some think it's incredibly meaningful. Keith, you were a captain in the NHL. The guy wearing the A with the Flyers now is a great penalty killer. He and Travis Konechny are, are dialing it up every time. He's playing well five on five. He's playing well in every situation. Is Scott Lawton going to get to see anytime soon if you guys are behind the bench? So what's the reservation? I, I don't. I don't. If, if, the, if he's the guy that everybody goes to, and we, we had this conversation with Wade t Allison two weeks ago. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we love Scott Law, and he's a, he's our leader. And our, so okay. where's the C? Yeah, like it's like taking a, a sailboat out without a mast or, yeah. or a rudder. Like it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Like where you get direction from? Who's who's the? You need a who's hierarchy. Yeah, we, I mean, we we didn't have it. We had we we were like captainless for a while until someone said, "I'm taking it," and it was the it was essential to a lot of our success when he took captaincy because he, he, this was just when Billy was coming into play as a coach right he was coming in and it was all systems all systems this is my rookie year I remember and Billy these Barber guys coached us these guys coached us it was him Rex even Rico Jonesy. was up there Jonesy was up there there's guys talking and taking talk was involved like they were up at the board and it was that's why you need leadership. You need somebody that's going to say when the coach is outside of the room, boys, we got to, we is have the responsibility. Is it more in the room here. or on the ice that that's important? It's, it's more in the room. Yeah, I think so too. It's probably it's more off the ice settings. It's like it's it's every day. It's it's certain you know it's travel. It's 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 practice. It's wake up. It's yeah. You got to deal with the coach. You got to deal with like you got the co the players got to go to somebody that can deal with some of the other issues. I, I love Jonesy as much as anybody in this earth. He's a <laughs> tremendous human being. I work with him at WIP. I mean, I can't say anything other than great stuff about Jonesy, but I have a very difficult time seeing him with a C on that jersey. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh, no. doesn't Jonesy's not a captain. To, no, no, he doesn't. <laughs> a guy like Jonesy doesn't have to wear the C. Right. He can be part of a leadership group. Yeah. Um, but but to me, you, as a as a team, you've got to find a way to like. If you're look now, they're looking for direction again. Like somebody, please give somebody a seat. All yeah. right, guys, we've we've had a, a, a kind of a short show, but it's fun having we'll come you back. here. Friggy and I'll come back. Absolutely, yeah. come on back. <laughs> yeah, this is a good spot. Real quick, 2023 as the calendar turns, fire's getting better. Uh, it's just some some stuff. Tortorella starting to kick in. Well, just I think the hit. only place is up. Only place, uh -huh. up, Only place to go is up. I mean, listen, I, I listened to the first part of your show on my drive down here, and, and uh, you're talking about the draft picks. And, and I was one for, for years that thought that they were, were drafting really well. And, and so uh, I still think they have the potential. All right, we'll see. In the year turns, things get better. Hopefully the Flyers start in San Jose tomorrow night. Samuel Urson is Carter Hart's on injury reserve. We uh, did a little bit different thing this show, but it was great. Uh, happy New Year. Hopefully everybody had a Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year to everybody from WBCB. Chris Sermon produced this show. 
Thanks to Richard Brogan for chipping in. Keith Primo, our co-host, Todd Fedoric, our guest. Thanks, guys, for making it here. I'm Paul Jolovitz. Next week, NHL ref Kerry Fraser will be here. Uh, we'll be at Chickens and Peace in Bordentown next week. Keith oh, will be back for that. I was just a week early. That's so just a week early. Could have stayed there, slept. We could have got you caught. <laughs> Absolutely. It's my fault. 100% my fault. I'm Paul Jolovitz for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Happy New Year, everybody, and go Flyers. You're listening to 1490 WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton, and now heard as well on FM at 107.3 FM, W297CL, Levittown.